Hello and welcome to Jason's Macintosh Museum. I'm Jason, your host, and today we're looking at a Macintosh 2SI from 1990. If you had to sum up the Macintosh 2SI, you would say that it was essentially a poor man's 2CI, in that you had almost as much speed and power as the 2CI, but you didn't get as much uh, expandability and as a result, the machine was a lot cheaper. First of all, looking at the case, and that would give you an idea as to the uh, differences between the 2SI and the 2CI, in that it's a much smaller, uh, more compact case, but as a result, you only had one expansion slot as opposed to the three slots that you would get in a 2CI. And in addition, the 2SI didn't run at 25 megahertz as the 2CI did. This machine had a Motorola 68030 CPU, but it only ran at 20 megahertz. And in addition, there was no numeric coprocessor fitted as standard. You did, however, get built-in video, which was just as well, given you only had one new bus expansion slot. And admittedly, you also got, and this was a first for any Macintosh, you got audio recording hardware. Every Macintosh since the original Macintosh of 1984 had sound output capabilities, but the 2SI was the very first machine to offer audio input, the ability to record sound, and we'll demonstrate that in the next uh, part of, uh, of this uh, video series. But other than that, it was really a, a cheaper, uh, more cut down 2CI. So, what did you get? Well, you got a Motorola 68030 CPU running at 20 megahertz. Uh, no numeric coprocessor is standard, although you could fit one as an option. You got one processor direct slot, which could be converted to a new bus slot with a special adapter board. You got built-in video that lets you display up to uh, 256 colors at a resolution of 640 by 480. You got sound out and also audio in recording capabilities. You got one megabyte of memory as standard and you could have up to I think it was um, I think um, 64 megabytes of memory in total because the 2SI only had four memory expansion slots as opposed to the eight that you would have on a 2CI. And in addition there was no provision for a level 2 cache on the 2SI as opposed to the 2CI which did offer that as an option. But I think the, the, the key reason uh, why the 2SI existed was to give people a slightly cheaper alternative to a 2CI if they wanted a colour Macintosh. Because at the time, in the early 1990s, if you wanted a colour Macintosh, you either had to go for the very low-end Macintosh LC, which came out at the same time as the 2SI, or you had to go for the high-end uh, 2FX or 2CI, both of which were priced um, upwards of six, seven thousand US dollars. The 2SI though came in, I think, at about three to four thousand US dollars, so it was certainly a much more cost-effective machine. The Macintosh 2SI was launched in October of 1990, along with two other models as part of Apple's new range of machines that they brought out at the time, and each of those three machines was designed to appeal to a slightly different type of buyer. For the budget conscious buyer, you had the Macintosh Classic, which was the black and white all-in-one model, which, which had the Motorola 68000 CPU. Then you had the Macintosh LC, which was Apple's cheapest color Macintosh. And then you had the 2SI, which was meant to appeal to the relatively high-end buyer who was looking for quite a powerful machine, but at a good price. That's the story on the Macintosh 2SI, so what we'll do now is have a closer look at it. Here is the front view of the Macintosh 2SI, and you can see that it has more or less the same footprint as a 2CI, but it's about half the height. So that's one of the reasons why it can only take one expansion card. But 
Other than that, very similar to the 2 uh, CI, although it does have actually a, a slightly rounded front panel, which makes it look a little bit, uh, little bit more modern. And in fact, I believe that the SI in 2SI actually stands for Slimline Integration. So that would make sense. It's basically taking a 2CI and putting it in a smaller, more compact package. So on the front panel, we have the power LED over here. We have the built-in 1.4 megabyte super drive, floppy drive here. Down over here we have the Macintosh 2SI nameplate and Apple logo. And that's it for the front panel. Uh, it's a very, um, very clean design. So that's the front. Nothing much to see on the side. So we'll go straight to the back. Here we have the rear view of the Macintosh 2SI. And as you can see, uh, very much like the 2CI, except just in a slightly shorter, more compact form. So starting from the left, well, actually starting from the top left, we have the, the latches for the top cover. One there, one there. And over here we have the serial number and production information label. So this would have been built in the fourth week of 1991 at Apple's Fremont, California plant. Power in and monitor output uh, power ports. There's the grill for the, for the fan, which incidentally is not part of the power supply, but you'll see that when we take the machine apart. And over here we have the single expansion slot cover. And as you can see, we have a video card in this slot. Then down here we have the power switch, well, security cable lock there, and the power switch. And just like the 2CI and 2CX, the 2SI supports soft power. And also just like those other two machines, you can twist, push in and twist the power switch to lock the machine in the on position, if desired. Then we have the microphone input and audio output ports printer and modem ports, external SCSI port, external monitor port, well, of course the monitor is external, but <laughs> uh, monitor port, and external floppy drive port, and one ADB, as opposed to the two you would normally get on a 2CI. So there's the back view of the 2SI. So now we'll take it apart. Here's the underside of the... Uh, 2SI, and this is in fact where Apple placed their information tag, because obviously there wasn't enough room on the, uh, on the back panel. So here we have uh, Macintosh 2SI, made in USA, and all the various uh, other information details there, copyright 1990 Apple computer. Just like the 2CI and 2CX, the 2SI was designed to be very easy to work with, in that this is a toolless case, which means that you don't need any tools at all to take the whole system apart or to reassemble it. So the first step in taking the system apart is to remove the top cover. Two latches here, just lift up on them carefully, and when they release you can lift the, the back, the, the rear end of the cover up, and then slide it forward to remove the top cover. You can see the front cover comes off together with the top cover. They're actually one piece. So what we have now, let's turn this around, the power supply here, cooling fan here, here is where a expansion card sits. This one is a video card and the adapter for that. Hard disk sits here, floppy drive sits here. So the first thing we'll do is take out the expansion card. Now the card comes out together with its right angle adapter. So you can see the card's actually sitting horizontally here. So to do that we have to remove the two thumb screws on the back. So we'll quickly remove those. These are what secure the card to the case. So we'll take those out. And now we can carefully lift the whole card along with its adapter up and that comes out like so. 
What we can do now is to remove the cooling fan. Now to do that you have to grab the, put your fingers underneath the bottom of the fan and very carefully pull up on the fan to, re to release the plastic clips that hold it in. But it can be a little bit fiddly. So you have to be careful. You don't want to apply too much, too much force because in fact you can see down here that there is actually a plastic clip that you should be able to push in on, but that only, only releases one side. The other side is blocked by the power supply, but you can't take the power supply out until you take the fan out. So it can be a bit fiddly, but if you're patient, oh, there we go, it does lift out. So there's the fan out of the system. We can now take the power supply out. There are three clips that you have to remove. Uh, in fact, we'll take the floppy drive out first. That'll make things easier. So we just unplug the, the cable for the floppy drive. And to take the drive out, two plastic clips, one on either side, bend them away, and you can lift the drive out. Now we'll take the power supply out. So we have three clips to push in on, well, two to push in on, one here and one on the other side here and at the same time we have to lift we have to pull out on this little plastic clip down here so if we push in on the two lift the back end up then release this clip and pull up on the front the power supply can be pulled straight out of the system We'll remove the hard disk next. That sits on a, on a tray, a metal tray. Uh, first we'll unhook the data and power connectors. Just pull on those to, uh, to remove them. Just be very careful. And the power supply connector on the logic board side has a little uh, tab you have to push in on in order to release it. So just be aware of that. Now we can take the drive out. So to do that, push these two plastic clips outwards while lifting up on the drive itself and the drive comes out. Now we can remove the logic board out of the system and to do that we have to push the, lo we'll push the logic board in this direction but at the same time we have to release two plastic clips. There is one over here See there is one just here and one over here. So to do that, just carefully move these back while pushing forwards on the board carefully. It's a little bit, a little bit tricky. Just carefully ease it forward. There we go. Now it's loose. We can lift the board straight out. Now all that's left is to take out the speaker assembly and the power LED. And they're actually one assembly. You can see we actually have a, a, um, a connector here that actually mates with tabs or pads on the underside of the logic board when it's installed. Now to remove the speaker, four plastic clips, one in each corner. So I like to push in on these two clips and carefully raise the speaker then we can release the clips at the back just have to take your time there we are so the speaker is now free just unhook the the LED cable there just push the LED back to release it from its holder and the speaker assembly comes out and that's it there's there's nothing more left in the case Ah, I should also mention, we have the nameplate for the, or the information tag on the bottom of the case. So the machine is now completely, completely disassembled. So what we'll do now is have a look at all the components. Here is the logic board out of the Macintosh 2SI. 
Starting from the top, we have all of the various ports up here. Of course, the power switch on the end. Then down from there, we have the floppy controller here, the digital to analog converter for the onboard video here. Um, RBV, I believe that is the onboard uh, video controller and uh, glue logic chip, probably similar to what was used in the uh, 2CI. That's the SCSI controller there, I believe. Yes, that's, that'd be the SCSI controller. Serial port transceivers there. Sound chips there. Oh, and all the uh, <laughs> capacitors I've had to uh, put on here to uh, recap the board, as usual. Apple sound chip there. Various clock crystals here for the system. And I should mention, the main CPU clock crystal is this one here, the one that is labelled as 40 megahertz. And it turns out with the 2SI that all of the components on the board can apparently be safely run at 25 megahertz, which was the speed of the Macintosh 2CI. So in a sense, I believe that Apple would have deliberately underclocked the 2SI so that it didn't steal sales from the 2CI. But as a consequence of that, if you changed this clock crystal, from what I understand, you can safely run a 2SI at 25 megahertz uh, without any problems at all. And in fact, some people have even gone beyond that and run them up to, up to almost, I think, 28 or 29 or 30 megahertz, in fact, um, without any problems. It depends on the, the board itself and the, uh, the quality of each component. Um, but this one is standard, so it's clocked at, uh, at 20, 20 megahertz uh, as per the original specifications. Over here we have the four SIM slots, which take 30-pin SIMs. Over here we have a ROM SIM, which was used, I believe, if your 2SI did not have its ROM on the logic board. And over here is the processor direct slot that the 2SI uses, which you can convert to a new bus slot with a special adapter, which I'll show you in a moment. That's where the CMOS battery or the PRAM battery would normally go. MDU, I presume that's another glue logic chip. And note that the 2SI also has onboard memory. So you get one megabyte of memory on board uh, as standard. So those are the memory chips there. Uh, let's see, not sure what that is. It's a PAL chip, but I'm not sure what its function is. Uh, not sure what they are. More PAL chips. There's the power supply connector there. These are the two ROM chips here. Um, what else? So there's the main CPU, the Motorola 68030 running at 20 megahertz. Uh, there's the SCSI connector there for the hard disk. Power connector for the hard disk. And there's the details of the board. Apple computer, copyright 1990. There's the board serial number. And there's the floppy connector there. So I think that's, uh, that's about it. So that's the logic board out of the Macintosh 2SI. So now we'll have a look at the UBUS card adapter and the video card that is connected to it. So here is the UBUS video card that is installed in the 2SI. And note that this is not a standard fitment. Uh, because the 2SI has onboard video, you don't need a new bus video card, but if you have one, you should use it because the 2SI's onboard video does use a part of main system memory for its frame buffer, so it does have the effect of slowing the system down. So this video card is the standard uh, Toby card that you find in the old Macintosh 2. So it's an unaccelerated um, card that I think shows 8-bit colour at 640 by 480 resolution. So, it's the serial number of it there. 
That's the RAM DAC there, so there we go, Apple Computer 1987 Macintosh 2 video card. RAM DAC there, monitor output port there, there's your uh, ROM chip. Uh, we've got the clock crystals there, there's the main frame buffer controller there, and all the video memory is over here. So that's the, uh, that's the card. Now notice that it's actually connected to this special right angle adapter. And this is the processor direct slot to new bus adapter that you can use with the Macintosh 2SI. So if I just remove the, the card from the adapter, get a closer look at the adapter itself. So hopefully you can, we can see that. And you'll notice that the adapter also gives you a numeric coprocessor so that you can ha actually have um, a numeric coprocessor fitted to the 2SI but only by using this adapter. So that's the Motorola 68882 at 20MHz. I presume they're just uh, bus transceivers or uh, bridge uh, chips there. And uh, clock crystal there. And a new bus controller there. So the new bus slot is up here and it plugs into the PDS slot on the 2SI's logic board. So that's the, uh, that's the new bus adapter for the 2SI. So now we'll have a quick look at the hard disk. Here is the hard disk out of the Macintosh 2SI. And I do believe this was the original disk that came with the machine when it was new. So you can see it's a Quantum ProDrive LPS made in uh, Japan. And we can see that it has the original Apple branding and it's badged as a 40 megabyte hard disk. But of course, like any old Mac, the 2SI can use any 3.5 inch SCSI drive with a 50 pin connector. So there's the uh, SCSI connector and power connector and all the various uh, chips on the back of the controller. So also it's worth noting that this drive has manual termination resistors, these three resistor packs that you see here, to enable or disable bus termination and you set the SCSI ID through these three jumpers here, A0, A1 and A2. And I think the jumper there, EP, is enabled parity, which should normally be turned on for any SCSI device. So that's the, uh, so that's Quantum, copyright 1989. So that's the, that's the hard disk. So that concludes this part of the video series on the Macintosh 2SI. In the next video, we'll reassemble the 2SI, power it on, and try out some old software. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for part two.